All right, well, Matt, stoked to have you on today. Um, guys, this is Matt Vega. He's uh, a black belt, he's been training since 2008. He got his black belt in 2018 um, from Professor Richard Feliciano. He's the host and creator of Ost Nation uh, BJJ on YouTube. Definitely check out, check out his channel. I'll leave a link to that uh, somewhere below. And uh, leader of the Big Man Revolution. So I'm uh, excited to just connect with you and kind of hear your perspective from, uh, from you know, the big, the big guy, the big guy game. Yes, sir. Uh, well, you know, a lot of the guys that uh, kind of follow this channel are, uh, tend to be smaller guys and uh, tend to look at it from that angle. But I think it's always good to just, you know, get your perspective too. So thanks for being on. Yeah, no problem, man. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, I've uh, watched all your stuff on Instagram and stuff like that and your reels and stuff. And I find them pretty cool. And it's good to see a different perspective of uh, what the little guy thinks because, you know, my, my whole channel is based on the big guys get no love in jujitsu. And so it's kind of like this, all these little guys do stuff, but like, you know, there's not too many channels for the bigger guy. So it's kind of cool to have both worlds kind of meet in the middle. Yeah, there's a niche or, or uh, uh, sub market for everyone in jujitsu, you know, always finding pockets to relate to one another. And I, I love what you're doing. So that's great. Um, for me personally, just before we dive into things, you know, when I hear smaller guys at times, because I know you said sometimes the big guys don't get any love. <laughs> I can recall uh, buddies at the gym uh, in years years prior, you know, oh man, he, he just beat me because he's big, you know, or oh, he, the only reason why he can keep American in me over and over is because he's big or he outweighs me, you know, and, and uh, for me, that never sat well with me because that's like telling a small guy, hey, you can't use speed, you know, <laughs> it's like, why are you complaining about a big guy being big and using his weight or size and strength and playing to his advantage, like just, you know, find ways to deal with it and work to your advantage. So that's, that's just kind of my mindset. But, um, you know, I, I know I can be frustrating at times because I've been that little guy who keeps getting caught over and over with the same quote unquote big guy moves. But, you know, I think, you know, the mindset for me is always, man, you, you do you, you know, play, you play to your strengths. I play to my strengths. Right. Yeah. I mean, every, there, it feels like strength is the thing that is the most like, and maybe that's comes from like, Jiu-Jitsu, Helio Gracie, Jiu-Jitsu was built to for the little guy to beat the big guy. Well, now big guys know Jiu-Jitsu too. So it's kind of like you got to evolve. Like you have to level up your money stuff, level up your money moves to be effective in the game. You know what I mean? So like, yeah. yeah, the big guy's going to stuff your stuff because he's going to learn the defense, but you still can get your stuff. You just got to be more creative and slick with it. Yeah. So that's my philosophy. The strength is always gets frowned on. No one frowns on speed. No one frowns on cardio. Big guys, we got horrible cardio. Notorious. A big man will gas. We'll yeah. gas, you know. But, you know, we don't get to say, like, oh, man, you just got too much cardio. <laughs> but, <laughs> Never you know, too much strength. There's always someone out there. I've heard that yeah. since I started as a white belt. Yeah, yeah. I've heard, man, you got great cardio. You got cardio for days. But almost, yeah, it doesn't have that same negative connotation like you're talking about. So right. I'd have to agree. But cool, man. Yeah. So I was curious, um, you know, as a bigger BJJ practitioner who's been training um, for over 10 years, you know, um, your experience from a big guy's perspective, rolling with smaller guys, like what have you found that smaller guys do that maybe works well on you or, or um, you know, and there's always outliers or exceptions. And I think that people following this channel just kind of want, you know, generalized knowledge uh just you know an overarching strategy or, or overarching uh tips that you found can work well for the average person uh when it comes to you know small guy versus big guy do you have any do you have any uh, thoughts yep. on that sure for sure um for me uh not counting the back because back attacks once you get the back everything's open chokes are open but if you're squared up face to face with a bigger opponent you gotta attack outside outside attacks are the best whether even you don't want to pass in the guard you don't want to pass through outside attacks long steps stuff like that that's how you pass outside attacks because that forces us to turn face you belly down try to reach for a single you can get to the back mm. um from the stand-up engaging right away with the big guy going right up and grabbing collars that's what we want like there's no there's even if you're going to pull guard don't pull it in the first 10 seconds. You know what I mean? Like tug on our collar, circle. Like you can cook a big man when you're not even grappling yet. Just like 
move just by snapping him, faking in and out, and then engage when it's when you feel like you've got his cardio going a little bit. Like I said earlier, the cardio is a little bad. We don't like arm bars, uh, arm attacks, feet, foot locks, stuff from the outside really give us trouble. Um, best sweeps for big guys. Um, I think there's a problem in, well, let me go back. So in jujitsu, I think the first thing you teach guys is you always teach them the close guard cross chokes. Right. But I think white belts and lower belts fall in love with this so much that they don't realize when you hang onto the collar so much, your guard, it takes a, you know, cause that gives the other guy, there's just a big guy cause you can't close it. It gives them their legs. Right. The, right. So once you get your hands off the collar, unless you have the choke, get your hands to the sleeves, mm. get your hands to the sleeves yeah. and you can play spider frame with your knees. It's harder for us to pass. And again, then we start gassing. Okay. And the best sweep that works for us, I find, is um, high frame, knee shield, kick the legs, uh, scissor sweeps. Okay. Scissor sweeps work great for big guys. And from the guard, collar drags. Gotcha. You're, uh, you're talking about against big guys from a small guy, right? Yeah, small guys. That's what yeah. I don't like. Okay. Arm drag, yeah. yeah. The bottom to get our back. Yeah. And, you know, you know, just high frame, like anything like really close. If you're trying to be real close, get your hands on the sleeves, keep your distance. Yeah, yeah. Um, outside attacks. Beautiful. I, I love it. And that, that got me excited because uh, a lot of what you just said is stuff that I've been uh, kind of sharing and preaching, you know, and um, I just got done with a private lesson this morning too. And I was saying for guard passing, you know, if you take all the guard passing, you know, hundreds or thousands of guard passes and you, you put them in the buckets, it's pretty much just three buckets, right? You can go around the guard, you can go through the guard, you can go under the guard. And for me, like, like you just mentioned, my strategy is often, if I'm on top playing against a big guy, I often try and use my speed laterally to go side to side and go around the guard. That's kind of my, my first preference. I love that. Um, and then, yeah, you know, uh, hand fighting is huge. You know, just, just uh, being able to uh, stop a guy early because I noticed when big guys grab me, if I let their grip settle, I'm like, oh man, it's going to be a long night. So it's like, putting out my defenses a little bit earlier and making sure I hand fight earlier to win the early exchange gives me a chance to do a little bit better as the fight kind of progresses. Um, so I'm constantly hand fighting and just making sure I'm gripping hands too. So, um, and, and I love what you said about even like that high knee shield, you know, just creating separation a little bit. Cause when we're clinching, that's kind of like your world, you know, it's like if I'm right. attached to you and you yeah. bump, I go flying, right? Because I'm attached Especially to you. You can't, so, close, your, you can't close your guard. Right. A lot of big guys, lot of guys, they can't even lock. They're just locking their toes. Right. That's me. <laughs> so it's like, if you can't, why do you want me up in you? Right. We love triangles. Shoot a triangle on us, please. Because if you, as soon as your shoulder, we're stack passing. Boom. So like shooting a triangle on a big guy, you're attacking the center. Like I said, you're not attacking outside. Hmm. So if you're going to shoot a triangle, lock it, go straight to Uma Plata or lock it, go straight to arm bar. Yeah. Don't. But you put you, I mean, maybe you can, if you have long legs and you're, you're slight, you might be able to get it, but you, it's going to be hard because the big guy's just going to stand up and pass. Yeah, I agree with that. I agree with that. That reminds me of rolling with my uh, old instructor. Like I would, I got to the point where I just gave up on triangles because he was just too big. And it was like, okay, if I'm going to go to a triangle, I'm just using that triangle as a transitional position to get to the Oma Plata. And like you said, attacking more on the outside. Um, mm -hmm. So I love that. I love that. I think that strategy definitely aligns with some of the things that uh, we've been talking about. Again, just kind of nice to hear it from, from your, your perspective too, uh, guys. Cause I, I know like some guys are like, yeah, well, it's easy to talk about it. It's harder to do. And uh, I, I just wanted to kind of get your thoughts on the mindset real quick, because I'm always like, you know, trying to, trying to give advice for the mental side in that. Yeah. You know, you got to embrace the fact that bigger guys, you know, to an extent, do have a physical advantage if they're bigger and they're stronger, you know? And so my mindset oftentimes is, man, if I'm rolling with a bigger guy, even if I'm a black belt rolling with, like I, I got this student, Bill, he's, he's a soon to be a blue belt and, you know, he's come down a little bit from 230. I think he's about 210 now, but he's still, you know, he's strong. He's athletic. He has a prior wrestling background. When I roll with him, sure. I'd love to submit him, but I walk away thinking, even if I don't submit him, if I survived that round and he didn't submit me, 
like to me, I can walk away still feeling good because at the end of the day, jujitsu is self-defense. And I'm like, well, you know, I can still get up and go home to my family. So that's kind of my mentality. And just curious to, to hear your thoughts and what you think about that. And like maybe some mental tips um, to help the, the little guys kind of navigate their, their, through. Their so, so, so some of my guys are going to be mad at me for saying this, but <laughs> for me, I mean, getting a black belt is, it's hard. We both know that it's so hard, but you get it because you love it. So it's not really, it's something you do. You love, you just get it because you love going. Right. Right. But getting a black belt and you say you're under 160 pounds, it's harder. It's harder than a big guy getting his black belt. Okay. Because you have to develop technique because strength is not there. So you have, so you're going to just take whoopings for a long time. And you're like, dude, I can, you know what I mean? Like, and, you, and say you grow with a guy who's a bigger guy in your class and he's leveling up with you, you might never, ever get that guy ever because he's getting good too. Right. So it's kind of like being a smaller guy or a female, your mindset's got to change. You know what I mean? Just like you said, like I, there was a girl who was rolling. I did a video on this last week that she was rolling with an upper belt and she lost technically in jujitsu she lost but she didn't get subbed by him and i told her I was like you won that fight because that's what we're here for because that's who you're gonna meet outside of applebee's or target when someone's trying to assault you and you didn't you survived so you got your mindset does have to change and i think that you just got to focus on the next step right so don't focus on the big picture don't look like i want the black belt just focus on like getting to the next class getting to the next class getting to the next class and then, you know, like I say, focus on the next and the belts will change. Yeah. I think as a littler guy, you just, you can't have, it's good to have goals. It's good to see somebody that you model your game after in class and be like, if I could just hang with that guy, then, you know, I think everybody does that. Like, I just want to be as good as so-and-so. I just want to be as good as so-and-so and that helps you get there. But if you just focus on the next step in your journey, not focus on the belt, not focus on, just keep your goals small, you'll end up getting there. I like that I like that similar mentality like just embracing the journey embracing the grind a little bit and you know got to be willing to to go through the, it's the stuff we've heard it's the stuff we've heard from everybody right it's like right. the black belt is the person who never quits and I, I wish i didn't have to say that but like if we've heard, all heard it our whole journey but it's the truth yeah yeah and i think one you know and, and to add on to that a little bit you know i think most of the people who follow the channel and and who train jiu-jitsu in general um, not everybody's in it for the promotion, but one thing I've noticed that is a common thing is everybody wants to grow, you know, right. and, and growth can look differently for, for different people. But, you know, a lot of times that, that fear of stagnation, fear of like, I'm not getting any better tends to drive people, um, to just want to improve. Uh, and again, that, that could take the belt on the side and, and not be directly tied to that. But, um, you know, I feel like, with, with that mentality of, Hey, I want to grow and I want to improve, you know, sometimes it's, um, you know, about having realistic expectations, but also, you know, just like for me, rolling with the bigger dudes, like, I, I, I don't know, maybe, maybe my mindset's just differently just because I, I grew up rolling with my average size training partner is like 200 pounds coming up through the ranks. My instructors are all over 200 pounds. I didn't really have a small guy to emulate and part of my mindset was, man, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta make sure these guys like respect me a little bit, you know, not, not like in an overly prideful way. And like, I got little man syndrome, but almost to the point where it's like, while I'm rolling, I, I have to demonstrate that man, I'm not just going to get ragdolled the entire time. And there's different contexts in which we can train, which I always advise my students to train in different contexts. So sometimes the context is okay, man, this is a self-defense and you're, you're fighting for your life type of deal. And then I'm just like trying to stay, stay tight and not, you know, not get submitted. And then other times it's like, no, you know, you're going to end up in a bad spot. And, you know, maybe the context is you're in an absolute tournament and you're down to zero and the guy's got a knee belly, ready, set, go. You know, so it's training through different contexts. But like a lot of times I try to uh, earn a little bit of respect from the get-go by, um, either using a little bit of pressure or trying to make myself feel a little bit heavier or, you know, trying to cut angle and use my speed. But initially within the, the first, I'd say 15 to 30 seconds, if I'm rolling with somebody new, I, I try to make sure that 
to me, it's a fine line between like how we're training, right? Because I don't want to get hurt. And I think coming back to what you mentioned earlier, getting hurt is one of the biggest deterrents from people actually getting a black belt or, or seeing that progression. Um, it's just, man, you get hurt, you can't train anymore. It's hard to get better by simply just watching. You still got to be able to get on the mat. But then, um, you know, so having that fine line where it's like, hey, I got a role to show some respect. So that way the bigger guy takes me seriously too. So just kind of curious on your thoughts between that balance of like, okay, I'm injured, uh, you know, I'm training not to get injured, but I, I still want to like kind of earn their respect a little bit. Um, I don't know if that resonates with you at all, but just kind of wanted your thoughts on that. My, my philosophy is, yeah, a lot of people have this stipulation. It's like, oh, the spazzy big 200 pound white belt, stay away from him. But my philosophy is, if you're scared of the guy that you were when you signed the waiver to start jujitsu, why are we even doing jujitsu? Mm. So to t I don't say roll with that guy all the time. Obviously not. You should roll with guys you're comfortable with, with your safe with, who you trust. And I get how upper belts feel that way. And they don't want to get injured. But every once in a while, like I said, you should test yourself and roll with that guy just to see how far your jujitsu has grown how good you've gotten um in the game because if you're rolling with the same guy and you, you, the guy and the, the spazzy guy that's what you're gonna see in a self-defense situation i think sometimes in this game we forget that that's what this is about self-defense is also part of it so i think sometimes we forget like i want to feel those movements of the explosive guy that was in a football team just to say, oh, okay, this is why I'm here. This is why I'm here. I, I think it's good, but you definitely have to walk that line and, you know, play that game. There's definitely more pr little guys, littler, <laughs> little guys, I hate saying that, but littler jujitsu guys are more well-rounded than bigger guys. Mm -hmm. Bigger guys just pretty much top game smash, top game neon belly, you know, right that's little guys you're forced to get you get put in bad spots early on in your journey a lot so it forces you to get more well-rounded so that's why i try to tell my big guys like you gotta like okay say you beat the guy once then you need to pull guard you need to start from your back i say anybody who's under if you're a bigger jujitsu guy and you've never rolled a guy okay roll the first time if you win pull guard or always pull guard if they're under 200 pounds you should pull guard mm. if they're over 200 pounds fight them but if they're under two event, because that's the way you're going to get better. Because right. you're never going to see a guy in a tournament. Because but there is pressure. We have pressure. Just say little guys always have pressure. Like your belt gets heavy. I probably so heavy when you're a littler athlete growing up. You're like, I got my blue belt, but I'm only 150 pounds, and now I got a 220 pound white belt. Right. I don't want to lose to him. Right. I just got my. I don't want me a professor mad. But like you're like so like the belt is heavy. Like this thing is like not physically, but like man but every belt is heavy because the big guy's thinking the same thing. The big guy has that pressure from day one. Cause he's like, I don't want to lose the little, little guy. guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's the same thing. We feel yeah. it too. We're feeling the same pressure. Like I said, in the open class, I remember it's like, well, if you ever did the open class, what is your mindset? The big guy is more nervous in the open class. I promise than the little guy. Cause you're the same belt. You both all won. And if Next the little guy game. wins, if the little guy wins the tournament, the open class, because jujitsu, mm all over you're on jujitsu times you're on all these different pages like jujitsu works <laughs> like but if the big guy wins we're supposed to win. right so yeah I, I can see how that might add a lot of pressure or expectations on, on your end too so. <laughs> um but yeah I, I like what you said you know and as an instructor myself too it's like given that perspective of you mentioned applebee's earlier you know you're on the street you don't have that choice to choose who choice. picks on you or or attacks you you know it's like in the gym we can get selective at times and, and granted there's a time and a place for it. Right. I'm injured. I got a neck injury. Maybe I don't want to roll with that bigger guy tonight, but you know, still being able to test yourself overall and say, Hey, come on, let's roll. You know, I, I we had this guy uh, who was over 400 pounds uh, in our gym. That was one of my regular training partners. And I was like, Oh my gosh, you know, I, I, I couldn't do anything to him. But at the same time, it was like, just being okay with rolling with him made me feel more confident that man, nobody else that I'm going to run into on the street is bigger than this dude right here. Exactly. So even though I, I got smashed, it still gave me a sense of confidence and, and that like, man, if something did happen, like I, at least I could feel well-prepared, you know? And then, um, yeah, coming back to like the newer students, especially the, the, the women or, you know, the people that are undersized, it's like, now we want you to stay around. We want you to be a member of the gym, you know, 
and we'll kind of advise them maybe hey, okay, maybe not in your first day or your first month right rolling with that dude that, that guy's a little outside your your comfort zone and it's more so from an injury standpoint but um so i do i do take that angle on in the very very beginning but i also i, I love what you said too hey go test yourself but also as i see i'm not i don't have my own school i just train at a school so as an instructor you probably set the matchups up in your a lot of times for the lower belts right yeah. nobody else can pick their partners but the, for lower belts you'd be like hey go with so-and-so hey go here go here and then you because you know the guys that aren't gonna hurt the new guy right so you kind of can pick that up so like definitely don't go if you have a good instructor he's gonna set you up he's gonna try not to get you injured but it's also your job you have like i want to see her how she's doing i want her to go here and like but i know he's not gonna you know what i mean like that my coach will send me with a bunch of lower guys because he knows i'm not gonna like you know crush them yeah so it's yeah awesome man um I guess uh, one of my last questions for you is from your point of view, you know, if you could talk about, cause we talked about the strategy that could work well from a big guy against, or from a little guy against a big guy from a big guy's perspective. But I'm also curious from a big guy's perspective, what is often the game plan that you're trying to implement? You know, if we were to kind of generalize a little bit, what is the game plan that you're trying to implement as a big guy against a little guy? Okay. So generally I always know that little guys are going to pull guard they're not going to try to stand with the big guy usually unless you know they're a wrestler right then they might be shoot a, a single outside single or something so i pretty much always know so i'm always you know waiting for them to lock up so when they lock up especially in the lower levels when they're pulling guard you know the sleeve you have is the foot the foot they shoot up because you don't want them to get the takedown points so but as a lower level guys i'm looking at their eyes and i can look at that i can see them thinking in their head and they look down at their sleeve and I'm like, oh, he's about to pull. So as they do pull, then that's when I, I'll pass. So like, um, I'm always looking, cause I, the big guys, you know, the big guys don't want to pull guard, you know, the little guys do. So when I'm going to the little guy, the big guy kind of has the advantage at the beginning cause you're both standing and you kind of know where the fight's going to go. Yeah. So you've got to be really calculated on your guard pull. That's what I'm saying. Don't do it right away because the big guy's expecting it. Right. So like, and that's what I'm looking to pass right away off that. And then, if I get the side control, you know, I'm just looking neon belly, baseball bat, clock choke, head arm triangle, north south choke. I'm just looking to just really, really cook you, make it, you know, and try to get you to turtle away and then old faithful clock choke. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, like, I'm just basically looking to just, I want to be heavy, I want to smash, I want to go through you. And I know that you're gonna pull guard. So I'm I'm staying low. I'm I'm not up high because I know the guard's coming. I'm really low with you. I lock up and right when you pull, I'm I'm look, I'm so like, well, what sleeves you got? And then I'm going. That's I mean, that's pretty much how I handle all little guys. Right. Or if they have closed guard, I'll put my hand right here on my side and I'm just like, please go try. Ahead, man. Yeah. <laughs> Triangle. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 So um, you know, I mentioned for from my point of view, oftentimes within those three buckets of guard passing, you know, I try to play play outside. Uh, on the defensive side, I feel like where a lot of students run into challenges and, and myself early on and, and still to this day it was bigger guys stapling my leg to the mat or bigger guys stacking, like you mentioned. And so um, is, is that in alignment with your strategy? Because I'm always trying to look to pummel my legs and still back inside position. A couple under scoops yeah. under the belt. Forcing a back roll or a stack, that is money for me. I mean, yeah, of course, we love that. But I think people forget in jujitsu, like you're so used to, you don't have, your butt is not stuck to the ground. I think when you're on guard, even me, when I'm on guard, when I first started, I was like, my butt is, I, people would pass. I'm like, you can, why we do the butt scoots and drills and like the, the forward arm drug, you can keep backing away, keep the distance. You don't have to stay underneath him. You right. can keep backing up. And I think a lot of times, you forget that and just do it. technical standup is real like right right <laughs> it's real like if you're like oh i'm on the ground but he don't have anything like technical standup get back up to your feet right you know what i mean half guard too we don't half guard it, it, you know deep half could be a trouble for a big guy too especially if you don't let us hug your neck if you can like keep the frame up through your leg and then swim and get the underhook right away deep half and we can't get your neck that works a lot for us too yeah 
yeah, defensively, uh, again, I like utilizing Spider. Uh, I like um, just, we call it monkey guard, where you just have two feet on the hips to kind of stop forward pressure. But offensively, yeah, that aligns with me too, because I play a lot of single leg X guard uh, and a lot of deep half guard against the bigger guys, because I feel like because there's so much of a size difference, oftentimes I can kind of create a little space just to wiggle myself underneath. And then vice versa, like my instructor would try to deep half against me at times. He's like, dude, you're like the hardest person to deep half. I'm like, yeah, it's because my legs are so small. Like you don't have as much space to operate, you know? So as big guys, if we're a little burrito big, right? <laughs> like I said, you can be genetically big on my channel or you can be burrito big. Mm -hmm. Like I'm a little burrito big. I used to be small and now I'm burrito big. Mm -hmm. uh, but like, so if you're a little burrito big, we can't, you're inside already. We can't get in there. We can't get to you and hug your neck and, and smash you because you're already inside. Yeah. You just got to get in there. You got to, you got to, because the, the fight on half guard for a little guy is getting inside. Yeah. Because then we can't get, you know, we can't, we could try to pry your face off, but it's going to be really, really hard. You know, I had a chance to roll cyborg too. It's like, man, what a guy is equally skilled or even more skilled and he's bigger than you. Like even more so my expectation is, okay, you're supposed to win, but that still doesn't change my mentality of I'm going to win, if that makes sense. So like, you know, I, I got to road cyborg and my mentality was, I was watching him just kind of surf all over everybody. I was like, I got to take the fight to him. And, you know, I'm, I'm just, I'm small guy and, you know, I'm, I'm not a big name like he is, you know, and obviously skill wise, there's a huge disparity. And so I wasn't, in my mind, expecting to submit him, you know, but uh, my mindset was still like, dude, play your game, get in his face and take the fight to him. And as hard and as scary as that was, I was like, I'm going to do it. And, um, you know, I mean, he wasn't like going full, full ADCC mode on me, but uh, I, you know, I'm not trying to do my own horn or anything, but like when he left the gym, the friends that he was connected to that, you know, got him in the gym, uh, he, he commented on one person. That one person was me. He's like, Brandon had a really good jujitsu. And I was like, Oh, right on. You know, it kind of made me smile and feel good, you know, but my mentality would, which I think was different from some of the other people. And that's not to discredit the other people who were rolling with him. Cause you know, my, my training partners are all good training partners and, and they're skilled too. But I think my, the slight difference I had in my mentality was I can't let you dictate everything that's going to happen. You're too good you're too big you're too strong you're too athletic it's like i gotta try and punch you in the face first right so i was thinking attack 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 you know because if i just played on the defensive mode you know he would have been all over me which he still was but i was at least able to hold my own for a few minutes so um yeah that that's kind of my mentality against facing the bigger guys i think everybody has especially at black belt we all have that like yeah this guy on paper is a, is a he's awesome right that's all but if i can get to my spots you know, I think everybody, you know, even from purple belt, I think from purple, purple belts or black belts at some stuff. Right. Right. At some stuff. I mean, like I was doing lasso really well at purple belt and that's kind of what I do on my back now. And I was, you know, if I could get last, I could lasso sweep some guys. So I had the privilege to roll with Bichesha a few times. Mm, cool. And, uh, I would go to HQ. He's preparing for a big old tournament. My professor would be like, Hey, we're going down there. We're going to shark tank him. We're going to do rounds on him. And I'm like, okay. And I remember going like 10 minutes from the feet. My first time, Pashesha, the clock, beep, beep, beep. I'm like, oh, crap. This guy is at the time, 10-time world champion. What? Okay. And yeah, it ended out just how you thought it was going to end out. Like I got doubled so fast. Like he's like a little guy and a big guy mixed. Like I don't even look at his stuff because I'm like, I can't do that stuff. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's explosive. But before the role, my coach was like Portuguese lasso. And he pointed to me, like he told Bushesha that I do lasso. So I'm like, and I looked at my coach, like he, like, so like betrayed. Like I was like, <laughs> the only, I had a I had one bullet. Yeah. And you said, no, nah. like you took it away. But that was a learning experience for me. Like, you're going to get it like the full dose. Cause he knew I would pull guard if I, and now I didn't, then I didn't pull guard. It's like, no, he's ready for that. So of course I got dominated, but it was awesome. You know what I mean? So I like, I don't know what, what the question, like, like the mindset is like, you just gotta, you just gotta go and get to your spots. Cause everybody has spots. They like yeah. as a big guy, we 
like going against little guys because you know it's we feel like we can get a win but then when you when the good guy a little guy has skills and a little guy has the right technique it can be hell for us yeah. and we'll be sitting on the wall the next round yeah. <laughs> you know what i mean like just so and for all you little guys out there i respect you guys even though you know maybe on my channel i'm like hey man this big guy revolution we're here and don't forget about us but you guys there's more of you guys there's there's more little jujitsu guys than there are big guys and you know i mean that's how we get better and the little guys that do have the stones to roll with the big guys consistently we look at that like man this guy's a g like we know we know the difference when you say oh man you're just so strong you're just using your power like we know that like we know that and if we were your size we might not end up the way it does but like like you said earlier like sometimes just surviving is winning you know, I'll go into matches as a higher belt. I challenge myself. I'm like, okay, I got to get five arm bars today. If I don't get five arm bars today, it was a bad day in the gym. That's kind of like, and I've been doing that since I was a lower belt. Like I don't want my, maybe it's defensively as a, when I first started, like I don't want to get tapped out today. And I try not to get tapped out. That's my whole goal. Or like, I don't want anybody to pass my guard today. And like, I feel like if you set little challenges, especially as a smaller athlete, you set little challenges up for you like that, your game is just going to grow. Yeah. Starting, starting from your knees is just going to hurt your game in the long run. If you're going to pull, if you're injured or something like that, and you don't want to, uh, I think you have a better chance at getting into a dominant position on a big guy if you start from your feet regardless because he's especially if they're low level they're going to miss a throw they're going to shoot in for a takedown you're going to sprawl on it you have a better chance if you start from your knees he's just going to dump you he's just going to he's just going to grab your collar he's just going to turn you right into side control or he's just going to dump you and then you're going to be full of jelly you know what i mean so it's kind of like you're better off standing up if you're injured and you're going to pull guard you can pull guard on your own terms you can pull half right easier you can get to you can get to where you want to get from your feet a lot easier can from starting from your knees. And I know a lot of schools start from their knees if it's really crowded or if maybe the coach doesn't trust you enough to be careful. But I, I if you're going to be a big guy, start from your feet because you can get to the spots easier. I don't know if that makes it sounds like wow, how that doesn't make sense, but it does because you could literally shoot half deeper. You can jump guard, yeah. whatever it takes. Or you lateral get, movement when you're standing. Right. Yeah. Right you know, arm drag, whatever, you can get to your spots a lot easier standing than can um, from your, see, we don't pull guard, we don't start from our knees, like sometimes I guess an open mat, because we don't, in our school, we don't start from our knees, my coach is like, if you're hurt, pull guard, that's what he said, everybody starts from the feet, because that's what you do, I mean, no one's going to their knees, so I think if, if those guys are starting from their knees, or they're both starting, like, sitting, like, a, a little guy should never, like, roll the big guy, and just sit on his butt, and be like, let's go, like, like, like you just let him stand up and try to pass right away. Don't no no no. He's standing, you stand. Like okay, let's roll and then shoot to your stuff. I mean, I think that would help them a lot, especially if they're lower level. No, yeah. a real expert guy can start from, from sitting. I mean, yeah, you I was know, just say, you know, everybody's watching the Mikey Musmechis, and and I'm like, okay, if you have that body type, that flexibility, and your guard is that good, then yeah, go ahead. You know, but I think for the for the average person starting out. I would have to agree, you know, just starting off on your back and letting a big guy have gravity on his side is you're already giving him the advantage. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I, I feel like there's a, let's so say there's a meter of zero and here's five and here's five. If you, if you're starting, he's already starting at three, five is his finish. You want to start at zero so you can get to your finish. You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of like, if you're, if you're laying down he's already, he's only two away from winning. Mm. So like, you want to keep it. That's another concept I talk about a lot is um, drawing the line in the sand. You know, and another uh, way I like to explain it is like, if, if uh, a big guy wants to submit you, that's like a robber coming into your house and breaking into your safe. And it's like, the, if you let him into your house, then he's just got to find the safe and break open the safe, right? But if you have a lock on your safe, you have a lock on your door, and you have a security guard and you have a gate and you have a dog out front, you're like creating multiple layers and you're saying, okay, I'm gonna start here. Like I take you seriously, like you're starting here. I'm drawing the line in the sand earlier. And like you said, um, I'm winning that early exchange and I'm trying to get an early advantage so I can become that three or that five who's coming closer to the 10, right? Your guys might lose still. 
<laughs> that's jujitsu, right? right? But a lot, it's a lot better than locking a deep half guard, make that big guy work for it a little bit more. And the more he works, eventually you're going to get that underhook. Right. And eventually you're going to come up to your knee and you're going to sweep him. Like you just don't, don't, like you said, don't have the door unlocked, man. Like, <laughs> like you get set, he's already got an advantage with power and you're letting, you're just starting from a down position. No, don't do that. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Awesome, Matt. Well, yeah, I appreciate your advice, man. And just for sharing your perspective, uh, guys, if you guys uh, can be sure to check out the link below, I'm going to leave a link to Matt's channel, Ost Nation. Be sure to like, comment and subscribe on his videos. And uh, yeah, Matt, I appreciate you hopping on, man. Appreciate it, brother. Let's do it again. All right. Yeah. And, and uh, Matt, if uh, anybody wants to follow you on other platforms, uh, how else can they get more information about you? Okay. So uh, on Instagram, um, it's more of like uh, Ost Nation, BJJ on Instagram is more of just like for memes. And I do funny content on there. I show some of my demos on reels on there, but it's more just uh, to have fun. Same thing with Facebook. Um, YouTube's where I do most of my vlogs and more of my serious big man stuff or in all jiu-jitsu. It's not just for big man, but that's just kind of my market. And uh, so, yeah, if you want vlogs and like, you know, stuff like that, YouTube, but if you want some funny stuff, uh, Instagram and Facebook, Ost Nation BJJ. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Be sure to check it out guys. I'll leave a link below and yeah. Thanks again.